Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So we've got Paul Tudor Jones in the news once again making a prediction. And I always pay special attention to Paul Tudor Jones. For those of you who watched my recent whiteboard video on yield curve inversions and the real reason they invert, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because I believe these financial insiders get information way ahead of time. The Paul Tudor Jones types, the, the Warren Buffett types, the Larry Fink. And they take action based on this insider information. And the action that they take when they get insider information that we're going to have a crisis is they buy the long end of the yield curve, which in my opinion is one of the reasons it inverts. And as proof, let's just go right over to the twos and tens from 2019. So we look at this, we know that the yield curve inverted right around August of 2019. Now you say, George, who cares? Well, this is just nonsense. What, what, are you, what are you trying to prove here? Well, I'd like to point out that recently, reports have come out by the US government that pegs the, we'll call it the, the, the leak, you guys know what I'm talking about, that one thing that used to be a conspiracy theory and now most people think it's conspiracy fact. That happened right around August, of 2019. So I don't think it's coincidental that that's when the yield curve inverted because I believe, and I think if, if you really go through this, it makes a lot of sense that you have this leak, let's say, you have the scientist freaking out, calling the local politician. The local politician has connections with the banking system and then politicians above him. So he's calling and then the politicians, that leaks out into the big banks who contact their biggest clients one of them, let's say, being Paul Tudor Jones or the financial insiders. And then they send their guy to do boots on the ground research. And they talk to the scientist and they call back to Paul Tudor Jones and say, hey, this is a big deal. This is a big, big deal. This could be a crisis. This could be a global, you know what? This could turn into the Cerveza sickness. So then Paul Tudor Jones says, wow, okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy treasuries to hedge the rest of my portfolio. You have all these massive pools of money buying treasuries. That puts downward pressure on the yield because the price goes up. And I think this is one of the main reasons the curve inverts. Now, let's go over to this whiteboard video I did. I'm not going to play a clip, but this just shows you the intro right here where I show Paul Tudor Jones at Davos, of all places, at the beginning of January. 2020. And he is talking about the survey sickness. And he has an unbelievable amount of knowledge, let's say. And the mainstream media is clueless. They're like, well, what? Uh, what? Oh, boy. hopefully that didn't pan out. Yeah, boy, that would suck. And he's sitting there listing off all of these facts and details that I think you could only have if you did some serious boots on the ground research. People say, oh, well, this is all public information. Really? How many people were predicting this in January? Almost no one, and I know that well because I was talking about it on my YouTube channel and just read the comments. Everyone's sitting there calling me a tinfoil hatter, Alex Jones, conspiracy theory. Oh, this is never going to happen. You're fear-mongering. Oh, pff, global what? Yeah, right. Sure, sure. Martial law? They're going to lock do lockdowns? Yeah, no way is that ever going to happen in the United States. George, this is 2020. What are you talking about? That was in January, right? So my point is I believe that Paul Tudor Jones is one of these insiders and he gets this information way ahead of everyone else. And one of the reasons the curve could be inverted is because of these global insiders seeing a higher and higher and higher probability of what Paul Tudor Jones is predicting now. Let's go right over to Zero Hedge. Now, I don't know if there's a prediction, but he, it's an assertion. Just like he's talking about this just in the exact same way he was talking about the survey sickness. And that panned out. We saw what happened there. So I think it's it's well worth considering what this guy is saying because he's proven in the past that he's mentioned things, he's predicted things that was on nobody's bingo card, right? So he said you could get a world war cascade where everyone gets involved. 
It's hard to like stocks. I like Bitcoin and gold. So again, I think that he's got a lot of insider information. He's divulged that insider information before. And I think this could be one of the main reasons why we have seen the yield curve inverted for as long and as steeply as we have over the past, call it 12, 15 months. He talks about the geopolitical uncertainty for a reason for being bearish on stocks. And then he also talks about the U.S. weak fiscal position, which I, I don't really want to go into that. But his argument there is we're just going to have to continue to deficit spend. There's not going to be a buyer for the treasuries. Interest rates are going to go up. The, the typical argument that you get. So here he's talking about the public debt. Here is one of his quotes. Where this gets really bad is obviously if Iran and Israel get into direct conflict because then you have, you've got the ability to have kind of a first world war cascade where everyone gets involved. He then goes on to say that there's a big risk of Iran or Hamas, Hamas uh, being kind of a proxy for Iran and hopefully that would be a worst case scenario. But if that comes into play, along with China invading Taiwan, he said these are the, the real kind of, uh, these are the real risks that we have right now as far as geopolitically that could be the catalyst to World War III. What he talks about specifically is Russia, Ukraine, China, Ta Taiwan, and now potentially Iran and Israel. And I believe that that he, now whether he's right or wrong, again, there's no certainty, it's only about probabilities. But the fact that he is saying this layered over what he was saying about the Cerveza sickness and the fact that no one can dispute he's a financial insider. And he has all of these connections. So I believe he has insights into the probability of the next, we'll call it, you know, black swan event, whatever you want to, would want to call World War III, that very, very few people have. So now what I want to do is go back to the main page of Zero Hedge and point out something that really kind of dovetails on what we're talking about here with World War III. Uh, obviously, if that happens in the Middle East, if they're involved, you would expect oil prices to skyrocket. And while all of these things are happening in the Middle East, look at what happens. We've got another, what they're calling a deliberate attack on the Nord Stream pipeline. Now, let's get into this here quickly. It, 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 so they say it's been del deliberately damaged. I guess this is according, let's see, Finland pipeline damage likely due to external source. I don't know where they're getting this information. This is something that I just saw. And they say this is months after Pulitzer Prize winner Seymour Hersh revealed the U.S., in his opinion, blew up the Russia to Germany nat gas pipeline, the Baltic Sea. They said, based on observations, it was suspected that the offshore pipeline between Finland and Estonia was leaking. They're talking, now this is more recent, they're talking about, as in today. While the Finnish operator gave no reason for the suspected leak, Finnish officials one day later have now said their investigation of the leak will be on the premise of sabotage. So we've got this going on at the same time when we've got Russia, Ukraine, the United States is trying to get involved with that one. We've got China, Taiwan. We've got Iran, potentially, with Israel. And then you've got Paul Tudor Jones coming out and warning of these types of events. The same guy that warned about the Cerveza sickness that had a, a mysterious level of detail in January of 2020. Now I want to go over to another article. And this is from, I believe, Fox Business. And I'm not sure where this one went. I had it pulled up here. Regardless, 
the main takeaway with this article with Fox Business or Fox News is that the Biden administration has now drawn down the SPR, the, Sp the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, down to its lowest level ever, ever. So think about that in, in context with what's happening right now in the Middle East. The whole reason you have the SPR, by the way, is just so if you have a conflict or something like World War III, how we, the United States, is not put at risk with the number one commodity for any economy, and that would be oil. So this is even more powder on the powder keg, if you will, from the standpoint of at, 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 we are at our most vulnerable point we have ever been in terms of oil, energy, the stuff we need to function as a society while we're potentially going into a hot conflict in the Middle East that insiders are warning about, that we've got the inversion of the yield curve potentially warning about, while at the same time we've got going what's going on with Russia, Ukraine, the United States trying to use that as kind of like a proxy war. And then we've got the United States potentially sabotaging these pipelines. And that was six months ago. And now they're doing it again. And then you've got potentially China sitting behind the scenes, playing the puppeteer, waiting for this to all play out as a diversion while they go into Taiwan. Again, there are no certainties, only probabilities. I'm not saying this is what's going to happen. I'm just bringing this to your attention because I think it's something that's very important that we should all think through. I think uh, I think right now in 2023, the worst thing you can possibly do is what most Americans choose to do daily. And that's completely ignore what's going on, bury their head in the sand, and try to pretend like just all this will go away just magically. In my opinion, that's the worst thing that you can do. And that's why I talk about this stuff daily on the Rebel Capitalist channel. So you guys can take what I'm talking about, come to your own conclusions, define probabilities, and then take steps so you can be in the know. You can be educated instead of just getting blindsided by whatever we have coming down the pipeline in 2024. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. If you want to see more of the most important recent stories we have discussed right here on this channel, Josh will put them in a playlist right about here, and we'll see you in the next video.